So, so far we've looked at print statements and variables and lists. Um, I've just added onto here these lines uh, which are called comments. And comments are a little sort of explanation of what's going on in the code. And it's like a little note to you as the programmer. The program doesn't actually run these. Now to write a comment, you just start off with a hashtag, uh, sorry, hash symbol, and you'll notice it will go red. Okay, and what you can use comments for is just to describe what's happening in the code. Okay, um, you can use it as a reminder to yourself. Okay, so you could do something like um, remind me to add such and such to your program. Um, or if you're programming with someone else, it's like a little um, dialogue between you and someone else. So it's good practice to start putting in comments to explain what the code does. Um, we're going to have a little look at if and else statements, and this will add a layer of interactivity to your game. Okay, So we've got the opening part of the game here, which we've seen, and we now want a an action. So we want the user to be able to choose between doing one of two things in the game. So what we can do, our old crone here is singing a song about eating people. We've got to give the user a chance to decide to do something now. So if we started off with, let's call it um, choice one. Okay, so this is the first thing we're going to do. And so that's the variable name. And I'm going to do input um, press R to run away or um, let's say E to uh, fight. Let's not do fight, let's do to use magic. There we go, that's a bit less violent. Um, so we've got a choice here. Okay, so we're going to get the user to press one of those two buttons. So this is where our if and else statement comes in. So we write if choice one is exactly equal to R. Okay, now you can see I've used two equal signs there. So in Python, this means exactly equal to. Okay, um, and one equal sign is like an assignment. So in other words, this is going to be the name of the variable, one equal sign. This is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so if choice one is exactly the same as R, and you can see I've put that in speech marks because it's a string, and I'm just going to put a little colon at the end. Now you can see when I pressed enter, it's automatically tabbed in from the side. Okay, and I'll explain why it does this in a minute. So if choice is run away, we can have something like print the old crone catches you and puts you in the pot and then we can go down a couple of lines and you can see it's still away from the side and we call that indentation so I'm just going to go back backspace it and I'll say else and then print uh, so if we use magic uh, you cast a spell on her and she explodes. Okay, so the way this works is if the user presses R, then this happens. Okay, if the user presses anything else, in this case E, this will happen. Okay, now Python runs on something called indentation. So you can see here we've got this print statement coming in from the side, and that, that is indented. Okay, so in other words, the program runs down line by line and it gets to here, choice one, and it waits for us to input. Okay, now if we type in R, the program will get to the next line and it will evaluate choice one. And if choice one was R, it will do whatever is indented underneath this choice. Okay, now if it's not R, it will skip this bit, it will skip the indent and it will move on to the else part and it will do this, okay? Because if it's not R, it will do anything else, all right? So if we go ahead and run this, we can kind of see how this works. So we'll have Bob, and we've got all the stuff we've seen before here with the various pauses. You can see the comments aren't coming up, okay? Because they've got their little hash in front of them. So this is our 
if and else bit here. Okay, so if I press R, the program will run this statement here. If I press anything else, it will run that one. Okay, so let's try. I'm going to type in R. You'll notice no spaces because that will mess it up. Okay, the old crone catches you and puts you in a pot. So that has run that part of the if and else statement. Okay, and if we run it again to check the other part, oh, I haven't put a name in this time, never mind, it should still work. And here we go. So if I press E, then it will skip the indented print statement here and it will move on to the next thing. Okay, and just to show you actually, if I press anything else, what will happen is it should do this exploding thing. Okay, so let's see. So if I just put in loads of random stuff, okay, it does else. Okay, and the reason is because the else statement, we haven't told it specifically what letter to press. We just said if they press anything else that's not R, in this case it would be E or anything else, that will happen. Okay, so that's kind of how an if else statement works.